straight out of a Hallmark movie, Tell Me You Love Me, Get Married in Your Referee Wrestling Uniform, so we know that it's real. Our guest here today has become one of the best officials on the um, state of Kentucky for wrestling referee. So if you would, tell us who you are. I'm Kristen Dennison. And you have a, you've had a very meteoric rise through the um, Kentucky wrestling ranks. And, you know, that, that shows uh, your dedication to the sport, having a, I, I would say you live with a good mentor, but I don't. I don't know. We'll, we'll cut that part out so he, he can't hear it. But of course, you know you're you're a Andrew's better half. So, Kristen, for those that may have just seen you the past couple years officiating, um, walk us through your journey of how you kind of run headlong into officiating. Um. So I followed Andrew around for quite a few years, just watching him. And um, COVID hit. And then he was like, I don't even know. I have no clue how the conversation happened, but we were working from home. I worked upstairs. He worked downstairs. He came up the stairs. He said, hey, I have an idea. I was like, what's your idea? <laughs> like, who knows what his ideas are, right? Yeah. So he said, um, I think you should officiate wrestling. And I was like, what? Like, no, no because I've never wrestled. So I was like, you're an, you're an idiot. This isn't going to work. And um, so anyway, so then he's like, no, I'm going to sign you up. And I was like, okay, I guess. So he came down, back downstairs, signed me up, came up and said, okay, we got to take your part one test. Cause he had a, I think he had a duel between, um, I think it was Taylor County and North Hart or John Harden um, that night or the night after. I think it was that night though. And so I took the test. Everything was good to go or whatever. And um, I went and shadowed him. And he said, you're going to officiate. I was like, this isn't going to work. It really is not going to work. I don't know why you want me to do this. So I wore his shirt. We went and got black shoes and black pants. And I think I think I wore his black socks too. But I was like, okay, whatever. Like, So I was scared to death. Even just shadowing him, I was scared to death. Yeah. Um, fast forward a couple weeks or whatever, you know, and I started doing a few things on my own and I was like, I'm not sure about this. This is not, I'm not sure this is what I want to do. Um, did the, the first year I officiated that first like January or whatever, there was that bluegrass state games or whatever here in E-Town. And that was my first ever tournament by myself. And I was like, all right, make or break, I guess. So that that was a learning experience. I got yelled at a few times by the coaches, which is, I figured I already knew it was going to happen. He already warned me that I was going to get yelled at. Um, and at, after that, I was like, nope, this isn't me. Like, I am not going to stand out here. And get, I cannot stand out here and get yelled at. Like, no. But I, the only, the part that I enjoyed was the little kids. So I had like the really, really little kids. So I was like, you know, it was like mother hen. I felt like mother hen out there trying to like keep them from crying and being like, no, it's okay. It's okay. You know, it's not, you know, but, um, so that was the first year. And then, you know, we, um, he started getting me talking to some of his, the guys that he officiates with, like, you know, traveling. Um, and then that sec, my second year, I, um, went to the beast of the East with him because he wanted me to meet some of them. So, I went, met some, um, and then we went to, in 23, right, I think, we went to, that was my first traveling gig I did. Um, Kim Hernandez had asked me if I wanted to go officiate a girls USA Wrestling National Tournament in Nebraska, mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of where it all took off. And, you know, having... You know, Andrew started out as the mentor, you know, pushing all the, you know, correct signals, correct, you know, everything. Um, I felt like that for me was probably the best thing that could have happened. Um, because one, I never wrestled. I had no clue what I was doing. I never officiated. So I didn't have any, you know, some people pick up bad habits. I didn't have any of those yet. Um, and then I guess I had a built-in teacher. But, you know, then... 
starting to travel, I met like Harry McDonald, George Dixon, you know, a bunch of like college officials. And um, there's some from Colorado. His name's Steve Gottlieb. He's like amazing. He officiates college too, but he's an amazing mentor. Um, and I had him working with him this year at the high school, um, national high school tournament in Virginia Beach and um, got a lot of good compliments from him. So that made me feel really good. But um, so, you know, doing those tournaments and then last year was my first year out at Virginia Beach. So I, you know, got critiqued out there, you know, got told, you know, try these things, whatever. And kind of everybody that I've talked to, like George Dixon or Harry or mm -hmm. Kim or, you know, there's another um, female out in Colorado, Nadine, that um, she actually gave me my first evaluation besides Andrew evaluating me in Nebraska. And she, you know, back up, like, you know, um, what else did she tell me? Always move, always move your feet. Don't stand in one place too long, you know? So I feel like to be where I'm at now, it's because of the mentors that I've had and you it's something, I mean, you can't just go out there and think you're going to be great. You have to practice and you have to work. It's something you have to work at. So you can't just, oh, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to be the best official on the mat because you could do it for five, 10, 20 years and you still might not be the best one out there. And yeah. at some point you just have to accept it. So, and that's a, that's a great point for anybody uh, coming in that, is watching this. We know the sport, not just in Kentucky, but across the nation. Wrestling is growing. Every it seems like every uh, I don't want to say every month, but now a lot of states have adopted girls wrestling, and you're seeing, mm -hmm. you know, you'll see uh, who you know people like yourself or Tosca. They'll yeah. share, um, you know, uh, you know whatever state, uh, mm -hmm. Nevada, Florida, whoever has sanctioned yeah. girls wrestling, and you know and. Is like, all right, you know, all right. so if you're watching this and you are a woman or even a guy uh, in the state of Kentucky and you want to sign up to be an official, we have a lot of great mentors across the state from Region 1 uh, all mm -hmm. the way out to my end in Region 8. So don't go out and just flounder. Reach out to myself, Kristen, Andrew, Jason Sidoris, Rocky, Blake, anybody who's gone on the channel, Joe, uh, Brett, and uh, John up in Northern Kentucky, Jake, whoever, just reach out to one of us. We'll do our best to get with you and um, train you, build you up the right way. That way you can get out and do some events like that on your own. And we can put our stamp on you and say, they're one of ours. Because mm -hmm. when we go out national events, we want to make sure we represent Kentucky well and let the kids know, the coaches know, the parents know, whoever it may be, that we're, this is not just a hobby for us. We take this very seriously. And it, like uh, Jake Lowry said in his video, every call matters to somebody. It, mm -hmm. it matters to a lot of people. And we just want to give the kids wrestling the best officiating that we can. Now, you may not always agree with the call. That doesn't mean we're not giving our best. Right, Kristen? Right. Now, yeah. in 2021, I come mm -hmm. down and stayed at your all's house. You and, mm -hmm. you and Andrew, we stayed there. We had the referee. Uh, seminar there in Louisville the, the mm -hmm. night after and you stayed behind at the house I think Andrew forgot some stuff and you had to meet him at like a gas station or something and I think so. uh, you know we met went up to uh, Mike Sullivan's gym mm -hmm. 2022 I meet you outside of GRC's arena there to get the ticket to get in we sat together for a few minutes what make fun of Andrew well, he missed that call whatever <laughs> then 23 you're working a table. You're you're yeah. one of the officials working a table. And then 2024, you get to officiate both the boys and the girls state wrestling tournaments. So yeah. that goes to show you that, like you said, you had great mentors, you didn't have bad habits, and you were able to get out and show the people that you needed to show, let them see, hey, I can do this. And mm -hmm. you did. And um, you were awarded the official of the year by the coaches association for the girls state tournament. Yeah. Well deserved. Um, and it was a, um, a lot of, um, a lot of people 
had, you know, had seen you around, whatever, and I'd be up uh, doing moving tables. You know, hey, man, love your channel. Hey, man, Kristen's killing it. What's up? <laughs> she, tell Andrew to have a seat, man. She, she's doing better than he is. What's going on here? So <laughs> it was it was good to to get out there on the biggest stage that we have in the state and mm. let the people know, hey, I belong here. I, I, I hey. belong on this stage and mm. uh, give – an example, a uh, I don't I don't want to say a um, a icon, but something for the because there's going to be a whole wave of women, mm -hmm. young ladies that are going to be signing up to officiate. We've had a couple yeah. in the state do the different do do things here and there, whatever. But like mm -hmm. you said, you're going to be mother hen for a long time to a lot of them. Right. So what? following Andrew around, watching it on TV, going to the meets, now doing national level tournaments in Iowa, Nebraska, Virginia Beach State Tournaments, boys and girls. Give us the Kristen Dennison, I wish I knew this then that I know now before I go back and, you know, take the DeLorean, go back in time and tell yourself, hey, let's, let's, this is important. Let's learn how to do this a little bit better. That way they can kind of have a leg up when they start. Um. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm still learning. So oh, yeah. um, I would say um, just be confident. Like I know when I first started, I know that you could tell that I just was not like I was confident because mm -hmm. I'm like, I got it. You know, we have to you have to own it to make it look like you, at least you know what you're doing if you don't. Right. So be confident, you know, um, like how you appear, your appearance mm -hmm. says a lot too. So, you know, not that when I first started, like I would say, you know, instead of wearing Andrew's shirt that was two sizes too big, you know, I would have got my, own, you know, got everything I needed for myself before I started and made sure I was completely comfortable yeah. in what I'm wearing before I get out there. But, you know, by the time I did get out there, it was my own stuff. So I would say, um, you know, be loud when you're on the mat. Um, you might think you're not loud because there are many times I think I'm not loud. But then there are times I'm like, I'm like screaming at these people. And he'll be over on the side going, I can't hear you. Yeah. Well, I don't, I can't get any loud. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work. Um, so get loud. You're um confidence appearance and i would say just always make sure like you know because i never wrestled i couldn't anticipate what was going on so i feel like for me back then three years ago if i could have maybe gone and like just was at practices where they did different stuff and you know moved around instead of like in the heat of a match like i'm trying to make sure i'm in the right spot then i feel like i could be I could have been better sooner because I could have anticipated those movements before I did. Um, I'd say now I'm probably way, way better about it. Sometimes I'm still like, you know, I mean, everybody is sometimes, you know, you mm -hmm. think it's going to go this way and all of a sudden they do something yep. crazy and it goes that way. And you're like, yep. uh, okay. Well, what just happened? What, what, what are we doing here? Yeah. So, um, but if I could tell myself, the one thing that I could tell myself is that, you know, um, you are going to get yelled at at first and don't let it, don't let it discourage you because I know, you know, as far as officials everywhere, a lot of times when you're new, that's what discourages you from coming back. Yeah. So it's to me, did I struggle my first year? I absolutely struggled. Everybody's going to, no matter if you wrestled for 20 years or 15 years or didn't wrestle at all, you know, you're going to struggle at first because it's something new. So um, I would tell myself, like, give yourself a little bit more credit than you are because yeah. you, you're learning it, you're doing it and you're giving back to the kids. And, you know, there's a lot of parents and even coaches out there that would never, ever a day step in the life of an official because they're like, no way, there's no way. You know, I, I officiated softball when I was younger, I got yelled at and I still went back. So I was like, okay, well, I guess. I'll give it one more year. I'll give it one yeah. more year. And then that second year actually was way, way, way better. 
Like I felt like I had the respect of, you know, a lot more of the coaches because they saw me and they, you know, the, from the first time they saw me to, you know, a year later, a lot changed. So um, I would say that that's probably like the biggest thing. And then um, the only thing that I will add, which I feel like I did all the way through is um, a conversation Andrew and I had when I first had started within one of the first like probably month, two months or whatever. He said, he goes, I really like how you do that. And I'm like, do what? Like, what did I do? He's like, you humanized it. Like, you're not just like a robot out there that can't have a conversation and joke around or whatever. Yeah. You human, you're humanizing the fact that you are a human and people see you're a human and, you know, they gravitate towards you because of that. So. I said, yeah, no, what. absolutely. That's, that's great advice. Um, did you by chance watch any of my rule videos when you started? Um, I did, but I didn't, I still was like, yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Cause I, like, I don't I know. understand this stuff. So. Yeah. Well, I, I know I need to go back and update cause they're all, you know, I, I was using not this phone, but I was using a phone, yeah. uh, no <laughs> microphone. It was, you know, it was a passion. You know what I mean? I knew I right. could do it. And it's still to this day. Um, they are good though. Have, yeah. Thank you. P P some people have they've tried to do their own. They're they're taking clips and they they've used some of my stuff in compilation videos into them. You know, thank yeah. you. But you know, on my end of the state, I'm the senior official trainer, mm -hmm. all that. And I tell every new official that comes in, the we're gonna you you got to learn first how to officiate. Yeah, there's a difference between knowing the rules and all that, you got to learn how to officiate. That's mm -hmm. what we're going to work on. Till we get you learning to officiate, you're going to do middle school, elementary school, maybe mm -hmm. a freshman JV meet every now and then. But I'm not going to let you get eight. I tell the coaches and coaches meetings, let's not eat our young. Yeah. Let's let these guys or girls make a few mistakes. They've got to learn. Because mm -hmm. if we don't, guess what? We've heard, we, you know this, and if you're watching this, you probably know We've had to cancel high school meets just because we haven't had enough people to go around, move meets to a different day of the week or cancel mm -hmm. all together. So, yep, they're going to learn how to get out here, make a few mistakes. Hey, come here. Let me talk to you. Take them off by ourselves. Hey, when mm -hmm. we hold our points up, now that it's three, we hold it up. We twist it three or four seconds. Everybody in the crowd can see it. Take it back down. We say it out loud. I got three green, take down, what, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And I'll say our mechanics, that is what is going to take us places. Yeah. If you have a bad mechanic, your car's not going to go very far. If you have a good mechanic, your car can take you wherever you want to go. Same applies yeah. for officiating. If you have good mechanics, it can take you to Virginia Beach. It can take you to Nebraska. Take you to the state mm -hmm. tournament at the horse park. Got to have good mechanics. So yeah. the uh, your, your rise got you on, I believe it was WDRB. Is that correct? Uh, no, W H A S. W H A S. Yes, I, I'm yeah. sorry to the, to the W H A S crowd there. Both Louisville stations. They they come and done a a piece on you because it was such mm -hmm. an interesting story. Yeah, and you know, being the the first uh, woman to get to officiate any state wrestling tournament, let alone both of them. So you done the boys. You had the finals match of Jaden Rainey, which lasted mm -hmm. all of I think thirty something seconds. I mean, the Jordan and Jaden Rainey, two of the best wrestlers in the mm -hmm. nation, Union yeah. County. And they're, you know, I think they're on two or three world teams this summer. We're filming this on the 15th of May, 2024. So we're trying to date ourselves. But as of this filming, we know that they're on like national teams are probably going to go to Fargo and clean house. there. two of the best wrestlers ever. And it wouldn't really be doing you any justice to show off your officiating by showing a 38 second match that really, you know, wasn't much. So we're going to pull up your girls state finals and it's a, it's a much better match. I will say the only, the one, the other thing I did like, like about the fact that that was the boys match was my first match at the state tournament for finals is that Andrew got to be my assistant. Yeah. So that was the only, I mean, that was like really cool. Cause I mean, yes, we've officiated, you know, other, in other States or whatever together and, you know, in like regions and all that, but mm -hmm. like for it to be here in the moment, it to me, like, it was like kind of just like the icing on the cake. 
Oh okay. yeah. And no. the, um, of course, um, Rocky and Blake in 2022, they got mm -hmm. to be the first father son, uh, combination yeah. to do a state finals. Of course that video Blake's reviews on the channel with that match. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Jordan Andrews, um, Andrews, his uh, 2023 review video for the heavyweights on the is on the channel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a that's a pretty cool, you know, the family connection, father, son, yeah. husband, wife. That's a pretty cool, um, pretty cool dynamic to have. And yeah, it's um, I'm not sure who your assistant is here. We'll see it here just John. In a second. It's who? John. Oh, John. John okay, yeah. So you yeah. got a got got a great official out there with you. This is mm -hmm. uh, Sophie Anderson from Walt Barona and Jaila Romo Sanchez from Southern. Now, um, Romo Sanchez, she's from, I believe, Puerto Rico. It's either Puerto Rico or Cuba. It's, it's one or the other. And she's on a uh, like a national Greco or freestyle team. She's an excellent wrestler. Um, so, you know, you've got two really good girls here getting ready to go at it. So let's watch it. You lean in. You, you blow the whistle and then you step back, give them room. New officials or even senior officials, give them some space. I'm glad that you said that earlier about being critiqued on that. Give the give the kids some space to move. Yeah. So right there, you you are 15 seconds in, you lean in and say something. What were you saying there? Do you remember? I think I was telling them action and work okay. center. Because they weren't really doing a whole lot. They're just kind of hanging out. And that, that's a good mechanic, cupping your hands and, mm -hmm. you know, moving in. So, right out of bounds for neutral. We need all 132 pounds. Think about those official courts of awards here immediately. Nothing yet, nothing yet. You're, you're moving. Give a, give a takedown right out of the... Get up, get your neutral. All right, so we have a stoppage. Yeah, to fix our headgear. Headgear. And I, I love seeing you and John, you know, mirror each other, stay yeah. directly across from each other. If she shoots in, she being Sophie Anderson, make sure we give her give them the right, uh, right name here. Nothing, nothing. So from neutral here, Kristen, for the newer officials, what are you mm -hmm. what, what are you looking for? What did you uh, be, I guess, trained or taught that way? It's coming from coming from you. Um. I don't know. I just kind of look for it to see, like, if they're doing anything. Like, I know they can, you know, sit there and push each other around a little bit, but if they do it too long, it's like, come on, show me something. Do something. Like, yeah. work work for a takedown. Do something. You guys can't just stand here and push at each other forever. Yeah. And then All right, end so, into the, the period. Flip. Uh -huh. Green's choice. Green defers. Red. Red takes neutral. So, good mechanics there. And I, I believe that uh, Romo Sanchez, I don't think she spoke English. I think she had to have a translator. Yeah, I think um, the guy in her corner in the purple was talking to her in Spanish. Okay. Uh, when he did so, talk to her, so. I had a couple of her matches <clears throat> at the state mm -hmm. tournament. I remember one of, the, one of the coaches was the translator. Yeah, yeah. Nothing yet. Good. And that's another thing, too, right there. I don't want to say you were patient, but you let it play out. You didn't just throw yeah. it up real quick or whatever. You let it. So you hit her for stalling on the bottom. That's a good call because if, you know, head's on the mat, not making any effort to escape. Okay. 
you go step in, say something, back back out. And you hit her again for stalling on the bottom and you award the penalty point there. Yeah. I will say over the last three years, my stalling has gotten better. Yeah. It. So. Nothing. Oh, you hit her again for stalling on the bottom? Yeah. And Green's choice, and the coach brings you to the table right here. No. When the coach brings you to the table, and questioned you on a on a stalling call right there. What what's the explanation that you're giving? Um, I well, I didn't really explain anything. I just said you're he you brought me to, over here for a stalling call, and he <laughs> said, "Yeah, she, but she was, but she was working." And I was like, "She wasn't working up because she kept." I mean, when she when I was calling the stalling, she was laying on the mat. So, and I mean. It, it wasn't like for a second, you know, so yeah. I didn't have a choice. And then I gave him the coach misconduct because. Yep. That's a, that's a question in judgment. Boom. <laughs> All right, so you squat down here and it I'm looked saying like action. you had your hands cut, but I don't know if yeah. you were just. No, I was talking. Or... I was, um. I was down there saying improve, work to improve, you know, um, like because she was still doing the same. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Sophie was trying to get her to turn and she wasn't working, you know, she was just kind of laying down. There, so. Kind of being down there for a little bit of a near fall count, you get a, a one count, but nothing more. And to the people at home that wasn't at the state tournament, you're positioned to where you can see uh, the clock. You hit her again for stalling. Uh, that's yeah, a two point, a point. stall. Yeah. No. So I will. I will say that this was a this was my learning experience on the two point stalks. I'd never called it. I'd never got that far. So when you see John and I talking there, he said, "Hey, you're supposed to blow your whistle." And I was like, "I am." And I was like, "I can't now. It's been like four seconds." So I after that, everybody over on the side was like laughing and joking, and they were like, "Hey, you know, you missed that, right?" And I was like, "I do now." Yep. Well, and uh, I said, "But I'll never miss it again." Yep. And. Uh, I will tell you that I have called it two or three times since then, and I make sure I blow my whistle. You know that was uh, we'll, we'll let it end here, and we'll kind of we'll kind of discuss that just a little bit. There's, there it is. And of course, you turn around to watch the uh, potential unnecessary. Uh, celebration, but there was nothing there. So mm -hmm. that that stalling, I mean, I don't, I, I think I was sitting beside Garrett or <laughs> Garrett or uh, Patrick and whoever it was I was side of because I was I was doing something on my phone and they they said that and I looked <laughs> up and it was like it was was that the, was that the two point penalty and it's like I think she should have stopped there right there. So I. And like I said, you'll never make that mistake again. And it's not it, – I mean, it just – whenever – which I'm kind of glad the way the camera caught John doing his drive-by on that because that was mm – -hmm. that's what you're supposed to do as as an assistant is just go up behind whoever 
is on the yeah. whistle and just kind of, hey, you know, hey, uh, what, whatever it is, stone on the bottom or uh, mm -hmm. something to that effect. And John didn't do it to, you know, front yell. No. No. He didn't try to embarrass you. It was you. funny. We both kind of laughed as he, yeah. like, said it. Because <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, well, oh, well. He's yep. like, okay, I guess she's, he, he said after he said, I guess she's not blowing the whistle. So I'll walk back away. Cause he did. He walked up behind me and said, Hey, you know, you're supposed to blow your whistle on that one. And I was like, Oh, I am. <laughs> and he said, Yeah. And we both kind of chuckled. And I was like, Well, I mean, it's too late now. I mean, I can't. I mean, yeah, I could have gone back, I guess, you know, but I was like, Nobody said anything. And so I figured that I didn't do anything wrong. But now I know. So yep. I got back over and Andrew said, Did you know you missed that whistle? And I was like, I do now. Yep. I said, but you know what? I'll never do it again. Yep. Yeah. And I haven't. I have not done it again. I I don't I don't recall anybody in the stands like yelling or saying, you know, you no. to blow the whistle. What are you doing? <laughs> Come right. on. So hey, it it happens. You know, that's that's just one of those. Um, and that's why I say in so many of my rule videos, and even on here, ninety eight, ninety. 9.1% of the problems that we deal with, when I say problems, I mean um, fan behavior, coach behavior, wrestler behavior, whatever, is mm -hmm. they just don't know the rules. Right. And I'm not saying that to be arrogant, but I mean, mm -hmm. when you look at the overtime exception, you look at something like the two-point stalling, you look at um, something in like the, the bad time, there are yeah. so many exceptions. Did it happen in this period or what? You know, yada, 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 mm -hmm. that we have to know, you know, we have to have it. We can't, in, in the heat of battle, you know what I mean? We got to be able to pull yeah. it out and go right yeah. to the rule book and say, yes, coach, it's, you know, right here, this, this, this. And, mm -hmm. like, oh, you, know, you you were right. You know what I'm saying? So that, it happens. You know, lear learning experience in my first eight finals match, in 2020 in heavyweight for the boys, I held up the wrong hand for uh, points. And as soon as I come back over uh, to the you know the match, it was a seven to two yeah. match. It, it wasn't really like a, it didn't I didn't really cost anybody the match. It was just I was like, yeah. oh crap, I threw up the wrong hand. Mark Shoemate, right. as soon as I come back, Mark Shoemate says, "Do you know your left from your right? Do you know green from red?" I said, <laughs> "Yes, Mark." I messed up. I know I did. He's like, "Yep, you threw it up wrong, didn't you?" I'm like, "Yep." He said, "But he said, but you corrected it." I'm like, "Yeah, Mark." Yeah. yeah. So it, and you can even hear the um, whoever's working the table um, on the I don't know who it was, but it, it was a woman working it, and the microphone picks her up, saying, "Up, oh, he threw up his wrong hand." I'm like, Thanks. <laughs> really appreciate the, the vote of confidence there, guys. Uh, but I mean, it was a, you officiated it great. The stalling calls are right on good movement, good mechanics all the way through. Um, other than that, there at the end, it, you have any, uh, thing you'd like to add or, you know, say about that match or anything like that? No, I will say that, um, for, you know, just in general, like, I think that all of the traveling stuff that I did before I actually got to the state tournament here mm -hmm. made me less nervous than probably some people are. Yeah. But, you know, any tournament that we ever have gone to or any, you know, region, like even my first regions, when I did my first regions last year, um, Andrew was like, just, it's just another tournament. Like, if you look at it that way, what's there to be nervous for? It is. It's just another tournament. It's, yeah, it's state or it's regions or whatever, but it's, you know, it's all the same kids you've seen all year. So they might be wrestling a little bit harder now than they did three months ago, but yeah, it's still just another tournament. It's another match. So. Yeah, no, that's a hundred percent agree. And there's so, like you said earlier about confidence, but there's so much to the, to the consistency of the way you call a match it mm -hmm. call it the same way on a Tuesday night duel in whatever gym, the same way you would in the horse park for the state championship. Don't change your style. Don't get out there, put on a show, try to be flashy. Hey, call the match. Right. Use yeah. your proper mechanics. Stay within the bounds of the rule book and you'll mm -hmm. be, you'll be fine. I mean, right. you'll be, uh, you'll be well on your way. So 
We've covered getting married in your – whose idea was that to get married in the uh, uniforms? His. Uh, he said – What? Would, I can't even remember. We were talking about it, and we we were just going to go to the courthouse and do it, but um, we decided that we were going to go – you know, he's like, why don't we get married in our officiating stuff? And I was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, whatever. I guess we don't have to worry about what we're wearing. And then, you know, we asked Mike Ford to um, officiate it. So it was kind of cool. So and he was going to wear his, but then he decided against it because he was like, no, because then all three of us are going to be up there in the same outfit. So he, he, you know, he wore the jacket, but I think it, it was, it was really cool. Like, um, yeah. you know, cause as far as we know and have like, you know, thrown out there to see what catches, um, stop it. Um, Sorry, the dog. Um, we we never, you know, we haven't seen anybody out there that got married and like their officiating stuff. So, and then, you know, Andrew, I think sent it or somebody did. I don't know who did sent it to the that wrestling officials page on Facebook, and he posted the picture there. And you know, so I was like, I mean, it's it's cool, it's funny, like it's something that you know, not everybody can be like, oh yeah, I got married in my officiating gear because me and my husband both officiate wrestling or whatever. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. That that's a, that's a scene out of a Hallmark movie or, you know, something, you know what I mean? I, I watched right. the live stream whenever y'all got married, of course. And I saw Mike yeah. up there and I was like, this, this is, this is a movie script somewhere, you know, there's, there's, right. you know, uh, it's, it's got, got to be made. So we've covered a lot of ground here from getting married to traveling to, coming and spectating to be in a state tournament level official. Mm -hmm. Is there any, like, well, I'll say this, but we like to give everybody the opportunity. Um, anything you'd like to say, add, take away, tell everybody how bad uh, your husband is. I appreciate how, how, better, how much better you are. I mean, it, the, the floor is yours. So you can say whatever you'd like. Um, I would say for like even junior officials, um, junior officials and up, you know, always take that constructive criticism. You may not like it and maybe they don't say it how you want to hear it. Um, but don't always listen to the tone and the voice and how they're saying it to you. Listen, take away what they're saying to you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, always listen. You might think you know better, but everybody can learn from everybody. There's not one person that's perfect that will never mess up, that doesn't think that, you know, that doesn't need to learn from somebody because we're all learning. You know, even somebody that's been officiating for, I think Andrew's been officiating for like 36 years now from like when he got out of high school and he's still changing and learning and learning from guys that, you know, have mentored me to where I'm at that he's watching and he's like, oh, you know, that's, that's something I want to try and do or, you know, and it's small things. It's not even the big stuff. It's just the small, minute little like quirks that you were like, oh, I do that. And then now you want to change it. You want to figure something different out. Um, so I'd say for them, always take that, take that construction criticism and learn from it and always, pr you know, practice, practice your practice doing it. And mat time is key. So if you can get a match somewhere, go take that match. Even if it's elementary stuff, yeah. like, so, you know, some people don't like doing that, but that helps you get better too, because you have to learn to hold your calls on, you know, those six and seven year olds that flip and flop and don't really ever have control until, you know, a couple minutes later. So um, I'd say always, always learn, always take it, listen, ask questions. You know, if there's something that you think you did wrong or whatever, and you want to ask what you did, take it and don't get mad or upset when they say it to you. You know, yeah. I would get frustrated by my teacher was my husband and it wasn't always friendly. So, yeah. you know, and it wasn't that he was trying to be mean. He just wanted me to improve. And, and I'm, and I was like, can you tell me something I did good though? Like, I know I didn't do everything bad, but just tell me something good, you know? So, and then, you know, for him, for like in the big scheme of it. So I will say in 22, he, um, we were at regions together, right? So we went to regions and then he did the state tournament. We went to Nebraska. That was the first traveling tournament I did. He didn't really get to see me much there because, um, 
we were kind of on opposite ends. And then we went to Virginia Beach, which there they kept us apart entirely. Like we were never in the same area. The first time he saw me after Regions officiating was at the Duels High School National Tournament in Virginia Beach. Like what? Six months later? Because it was Something well four, I guess. You. Probably about four, because it was like February to like the end of May. Um, and when he watched me in May at the end of May, he was like, Oh my God, where did she come from? And he like, he could tell that from where I started, you know, I mean, that was my first full year, I think. So in February, when I did regions to then, he just, he was like blown away with how much I improved and how confident and everything I was on the mat. So, but for, I will say for coaches, I will say my experience with them has been better than I thought considering um you know because you always hear they're meaner to the new ones and i'm thinking great i got that and i'm a girl i'm like they're really gonna think i'm an idiot so um but i will say you know i think that them most of them knew andrew ahead of time right so i don't think that gave me any like grace but um i think that them having like a relationship or whatever a friendship um acquaintanceship, whatever you want to call it, kind of like helped me in a way for them to like respect me enough to begin with. Right. Um, but I will say, you know, the younger kids, like the junior officials, you know, I did see some yelling at them, which again, like you said earlier, we're trying to get these kids out here to officiate. They're going to mess up. We all mess up and they might a little bit more than any of us because they're still learning and they're trying to get, you know, they got the wrestling part, but they're trying to do the officiating part and just give them a little grace period. Like they're not going to come out there and go do an NCAA tournament the next day. There's, you know, it's going to, it's not going to happen overnight. So, you know, as much as you want to root on your kids and you want to cheer for your kids and you want to coach your kids, coach the kids, but try not to coach us at the same time. Let us do our job and you do your job. Absolutely. You know? I, I love walking into gyms and seeing those, especially elementary gyms. Um, the coaches are volunteers. No scholarships mm-hmm. will be awarded today. You know, this is yeah. not for the, uh, the Olympic trials or whatever. And right. like, just let them get matches on both ends. Mm-hmm. Let the younger officials, whether they're signed up for high school or they're signed yeah. up as a junior, let them get matches. Let your kids get matches. Everybody's happy. And to the coaches or parents or whatever, I've tried mm-hmm. to say this in all the referee review videos, is, yes, talking to a guy that has a YouTube channel that has a pretty big following that has, <laughs> you know, going on a million views now. We right. know social media is powerful. We get it. Oh, yeah. We get You can go on, pick whatever social media platform, post a snippet of your kid getting – slammed mm-hmm. or something going on and you make a rant post about how bad the officials are. Right. Yes, that is your prerogative, your freedom to do, mm-hmm. but it's not going to help anything to get on a social media platform and blast somebody that's never coming back. We've lost that official for good instead of saying you win some, you lose some and right. then send a video to myself, Andrew, Jason, Rocky, whoever, Kenny, Joe, whoever it is, and say, hey, your boy at this school, your your girl at this school really Mm -hmm. needs to work on this. We'll get it. Call them. Hey, do a Zoom. Hey, uh, yo, let's watch this clip. Okay, um, we're not trying to, you know, beat you to death here, but next time let's be a little bit quicker on when you see somebody get lifted up, step in mm-hmm. easy down, easy down. This ain't, you know, professional wrestling. This ain't MMA. Let's make sure that we're having a safe mat return. We don't want nobody to get hurt. Right. And then we go from there. So there's no reason to blast somebody or make somebody feel bad. That's trying something new. Cause like you mm-hmm. said, we all, we've all been there. We've all made right. mistakes. We've all done it. So, mm-hmm. Kristen, excellent interview. Uh, really appreciate it. I think the uh, like I said, you're going to be you're going to be mother hen to a lot of young ladies and women for a long time because they've seen you out 
and about. They seem if she can do it, mm -hmm. why can't I? You know, why can't I do this? Right. And that's a that's a great um, that's a great platform to have. And you know, you you've uh, what was it? I forget, I don't remember where I saw it. I I can't even remember. It was I think. I'm not sure what movie it was from or something to that effect, but uh, it was uh, The Apprentice Has Become the Master. Yeah. And I was like, that, that, that's you. The Apprentice Has Become the Master. Uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool that, you know, you're, you're, you've got that, that status now. So I think we've reached a great ending point. Um, I guess we'll see you when we see you because we see each other a couple times a year. It's yeah. always around something to do with wrestling. So I'm not sure right. when it is, but I'm sure we'll we'll be seeing you at some point. But thank you for doing this. Thank you all for watching. We will see you guys and girls on the mats. Thank you.